And at long last, here we have the IBM PC 5150 all back together. Um, uh, yeah, sorry it took so long to get this last update out. Um, I had quite a bit of struggle getting the um, case painted in a halfway acceptable manner. Um, I really struggled getting a uh, color match. As you can see, I mean, that's just not quite the right color. Um, I had I had chased down a lead that the uh, correct color was Pantone 413. And so I, I had some very expensive um, color matched Pantone paint made. And 413 Pantone does not turn out to be the right color at all. It's much, much, much lighter than what you see here. I ended up just using a primer that was approximately the right gray. Um, as you can see, I did I did achieve I did manage to get a keyboard, um, and it's kind of an interesting keyboard too. Uh, this one does have a um, a minor little broken bit on it. Um, it did come with an IBM property sticker for whatever that's uh, worth, um, and but yeah, it's a, it it actually works. Beautifully, every key works. Um, one of the adjusting ears here is is broken off. I do have new ones of those on the way. I thought they would be here by now, but I kind of just need to get this wrapped up. So anyway, there is the um, 5150 uh, all back together. All righty, let's let me talk a little bit about the things I had to do to get this um, machine sort of wrapped up uh, for now. There are still a few things that are somewhat incomplete about it. Um, one is that, you know, the, this beautiful RAM board that I uh, received with the machine, I never did, did get this working. Um, I suspect there, you know, as usual, there's probably just some faulty RAM in one of the banks, um, or, well, <laughs> one or more of the banks. Um, so I do have a RAM tester uh, on the way that I'm going to use to try to determine where that fault might be. I never did get a definitive... Um, find a manual or anything that showed me the dip switch settings. They do seem to be somewhat self-evident. I mean, there's switches one through eight, there's banks one through eight. Um, so that was an easy guess, I, I suppose. Um, if I do get this working at some point, I'll, I'll post an update about that. Um, I also had um, one other piece that I just sort of tried somewhat speculatively, which was um, I uh, acquired this very, very cheap uh, and in very good condition hard card as I bash into the machine. Um, okay, this of course does not work, so that's <laughs> that was another thing that didn't work about uh, the project. Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, I'll show you a little bit about the um, process of painting uh, the case. I'll talk a little bit about why I ended up doing that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about some final uh, fixes I had to do to the disk drives. I found um, some pretty uh, <laughs> aggressive damage on one of them. Well, actually on two of them. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'll show you that video and then I'll, I'll bring you back and we'll get a demo of the, of the PC in action. So both of the disk drives, uh, it was clear they had been just sort of ripped out of their, of where they were, um, of the case at some point. And you can see that uh, both of them had very similar damage to these transistors here, where this one is completely one of the legs is completely snapped off, I think you can see there, and the other one was very similar. So I ended up having to um, replace that with a new part, um, and then uh, magically the disk drive started working. Alrighty, let's uh, go ahead and start taking a look at the case. And by the way, if it isn't clear from how wide this shot has to be, uh, this thing is an absolute battleship of a computer. The thing is just huge and lots of metal and things like that. Um, anyway, the case is in need of some attention. I think the first step I want to do here is uh, remove this front bezel, which appears to be easily done. Easily done. Just two screws right here, bolts right here, very awkward spot. Alright. 
just gonna yeah, I'm gonna have to lose her. All right, um, I'm gonna this on my all right, here is that bottom plastic bezel. It's just a very heavy duty piece of injection molded plastic. There are some um, casting marks and, and a little bit of some other mark there. Um, looks like it's in pretty good shape. I My plan right now is just to clean this off as best I can, I'll try some um, surface cleaner on it and uh, hopefully it cleans up pretty well. Okay, a little bit of elbow grease and uh, various detergents later. And uh, here it is. Um, I'm very pleased with the way it came out. It's, it's not perfect. Um, and one, word, one thing to um, note, when I started cleaning this, I assumed this was injection molded in this color. But the more I look at it, I think it's probably a painted surface. If you know for sure, definitely leave me a comment down in the um, in the comment section. I, I uh, probably would have been a little bit um, carefuler, more careful, <laughs> if I had thought this was painted to begin with. Um, yeah, but it, it, it cleaned up pretty nicely. Now there's a few areas like here where it just isn't perfect. Like I would ideally like all of that to be gone, but quite a bit of scrubbing. I mean, it was filthy before. Um, one kind of sad note is that marking that I showed you earlier, even though I did not scrub this area, that marking just disappeared. So, um, yeah. Another thing to note is uh, a couple of these areas that I thought were screw holes. These were actually, as you can see, they were that was a locating pin. It snapped off at some point. And uh, here, similarly, um, they would have originally looked like that one. In fact, I think that's the only one that uh, remains. Which, uh, given the otherwise um, beat up condition of this case, I guess that's not too surprising. But yeah, all in all, um, very happy with the way it turned out. It looks very nice. I don't think I burned through the paint in any in any areas assuming this is painted and the 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 nice i don't know if it shows up very well but the nice pebbly surface that's on there is absolutely intact so yeah i think that's going to look really really good uh, let's go ahead now and take a closer look at the uh, metal portion of the top case all righty let's start looking at the, the uh, metal portion of the top case here um, as we can see there are definitely some spots where um, there's some dirt and grime, but also you'll see that the paint is uh, flaking off and there is some uh, active rust going on there in a few places. I think this is the worst spot, but there's small, you know, chips and uh, the like all over the place on this, as well as just scratches and, you know, general kind of long uh, signs of long use uh, a lot of it is associated with or is accompanied by rather um, this rust and here's the progress on the case top for the 5150 um, gotta say it really pains me to take this finish off but at the same time just I mean you can just see how peppered with rust it, it was, I think anything I painted over the top of this finish would have, yeah, would have suffered a um, terrible fate. <laughs> yes, it's tough to take this off, but uh, it is working out pretty well. Um, and I just think this is the best way to go. So um, I will bring you back when I have uh, maybe even more, probably when it's completely uh, stripped. And here we've got the uh, the 5150 case. I've got it set up on a little bit of cribbing. Um, all the paint is off. I've prepared the surface, wiped it down, um, got it on some cardboard, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, first coat of uh, primer. I'll bring it back when it's on. And the first coat of primer is down. Um, Actually, it looks kind of like a convincing color already. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I think I'm gonna let this dry and uh, just do one more coat of primer before we go on to hopefully spraying the texture and then uh, the final color. Okay, here's one of the uh, remnants, one of those cork feet. It's um, just got some dried up um, adhesive residue on there. I'm gonna use some of this Goo Gone, uh, see if it, it will loosen up. Unfortunately, the sprayer portion of this uh, has um, perished, and so I'm just going to apply some with a paper towel here, see if we can get this thing sort of soaked down. I anticipate it'll need to set for a while. One of the good things about this Goo Gone stuff is it smells like oranges. It's kind of a gel, kind of like the blob. I'm just going to position it around on some of that crud and let it sit. I'll come back in a, in a bit here and see how it is done. All right, let's go ahead and get those cork feet stuck on. Hopefully these stick real, real well. I'm not trying to be too precise here, but um, just for consistency's sake, we'll uh, do a little bit of measuring at least. It's hard to tell where they were originally. All right, that looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and get the rest of them and then we can move on to the next step with the case. Now let's go ahead and boot up um, PC-DOS 3.3. And that's going to do it for uh, this series on restoring this IBM 5150 PC. Uh, it was a really interesting journey. Um, hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, I will, when I have more updates about this machine, uh, I will um, bring them to you in the future. Um, yeah, really fun machine to work on. Really neat to see this sort of, just how uh, antique the actual beginnings of the PC were. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I will catch you on the next one.